And so the mistake that we have been repeating over and over and over over our elections. And then we sit back, we sit down after we elect them and say our economy and this. It's not a mistake, it's a decision. As a nation, we need to accept that our decision has landed us into the struggle that we're in. And until we start to take greater decisions, we will not make the best of choice in this world. Let's all use the wisdom God has given us, the knowledge that God has given us, the resources that God has given us, the, the, the human resource that God has given us. Let's start using it. Let's start tapping into it and not abusing it or destroying it. I think that this has come to an end with the 16 region. It's giving you at least a 30% clarity. I didn't want to bring everything from Gota and everything. I have all the numbers. Every one of the region is rich. In fact, the poorest region in this country has become the only region that is active. And that is a crime. They don't have anything. They don't have gold, they don't have oil, they don't, they don't even have a space to do a farming. <laughs> yes, but it's sad that it is the only one region that is active. All the 15 regions are not active. I am saying that the policy of the new force movement is to come and activate these regions, the 15 regions, to compete with Accra, to create wealth, and then consolidate our national economy so we can create economic prosperity, we can create economic balance. We are going to create endless jobs. We are going to fill the vacuum. But you might think that, oh, why do I want to do it? No, it is part of my legacy, my responsibility. And it's also going to make us richer than we used to be. Oh. If I'm a Ghanaian and you are Ghanaian, then we own Ghana together. We have to do it together. Well, some of us are not going to be the entrepreneurs that will build the plants, but guarantee that some of us are going to be the workers that will be guaranteed jobs in the next 30 years. And after that, we will build our houses and buy our cars. It's not everyone that is born as a leader, but neither would every worker would be able to do what the leaders do, but without the record also, the leader cannot become one. So it takes us as a nation to build ourselves and to make a country together. So that is our presentation. It's not like a political campaign where I have to give anybody money or t-shirt to stand for me. All the people you saw genuinely came for me. From disabled to the able, to the poor, to the rich, to the young, to the old. They came for me, because my heart is for this nation. I think I've been blessed enough. Don't think I need anything from you more so than everything I can get for you, is what I'm striving for. I can't take more. You saw the buildings up. The reason why we're becoming like what we're becoming is because we're stripping all the values from ourselves. And nobody is adding the value. I want you, all of you, to support this new young force. Because our intentions are good. We don't even want to kill an ant. We also have life. You know, we want to be fair. We want to be fair to society. We want to be fair to the nation that we belong to. We don't want to be sitting in a nice car and then one day, somebody is going to say they're from Ghana and they're so broke, they can't even pay for transport. Then it looks like, how did you get your car? We have to do something about this. And this year, 2024, is a year of change. It's double grace. The year, it comes in 12 months and it's now landed in year 24. It's a time of change. You guys can see it's happening. It's happening in Senegal. It's happening in uh, Argentina. It's happening even outside Africa. It's God that is changing the world. The world is changing. We need to join it. We can't be old and then die and not help the situation change. 
Because me standing here today, I might be part of the youth. But in a couple of years, I'll be heading towards being an old person too. And if at that time is when I come to tell you all of this, then maybe you should call me a liar. Because what was I doing all this time that I couldn't help, that I waited to be 70 before I said, I'm going to build your future? How do you expect somebody who has outlived your future to build your future? <laughs> We are supposed to take care of those people. When our fathers are 70, we have to take care of them. Because they took care of us to become 35. Now that we're 35 halfway through the, our life, why do we still expect them to take care of us? We should be taking care of them. That responsibility is what I want us to have is to change the narrative of politics. You see, in the past, every politician has gone to people and given them money and told them that, here's a t-shirt, vote for me. That very point, what happened, there is no difference in what Judas did to Jesus. <laughs> the same thing you just done. Yes, you sold your soul because that governance is what is going to help build the nation and the country. But you are using a different strategy and agenda in corruption to make that happen. So we decided to introduce a family. Now, why did I do this? I realized that in America, these are people who introduce democracy and we're following them, we're following the system. Every one of the leaders, they go to the public and say, donate. So Obama, he donated. Uh, Trump, they donated. Now Trump was a multi-billionaire. Obama was broke. The two still ask for donation. Why? Because when the nation donates into the leader, the leader will start to serve them when they win because they put him there. That is a power in the exchange of money. It's magical. We see this manifesto, and I want to say that our policies about the labor sector, this manifesto is going to be a part of it. In fact, the labor union will probably be the ones writing that manifesto for us in our entire manifesto.